You might expect me to pick up this video here where the last video left off. Um, however, after I sent this to print, I realized that this is actually not a advanced topics concept. It's more of a pre-calculus concept. And as such, we're going to skip that. You can deal with that next year. Um, the last kind of graphing that we're going to address is what happens if the polynomial on the top and the polynomial on the bottom have common factors and you're able to cancel something out. And you may remember that I've mentioned this before. If you're able to cancel something out from the numerator and denominator that is a like binomial uh, or a something with x in it, more to the point, you'd, that's where you'd end up with a hole in your graph. You'd end up with a removable discontinuity. So first and foremost, before I do any of the other stuff that I've been starting to do in the last videos um, on graphing, as far as finding zeros and such, first thing I want to do is factor. Okay, so this factors to x plus 6 times x plus 4 over x plus 4 times x minus 3. And so you see that we do have common factors. We have the x plus 4 on the top and the bottom that are going to cancel out. Okay, so that means I have a whole at x equals negative 4. Now let's move on and talk about the other things that we've been talking about so far. I have a vertical asymptote at this other value, x equals positive 3, because if x minus 3 equals 0, then x equals positive 3. Um, I have a horizontal asymptote at 1 over 1, so y equals 1 is my horizontal asymptote. It's also asking me about intercepts, so remember that we find our intercepts by plugging in 0 for x in order to find my y-intercept and 0 for y to solve for my x-intercept. So if I plug in 0 for x, my y-intercept will be 0 comma, so that'll be 6 over negative 3, which is negative 2. In order to find my x-intercept, I just need to take the numerator and set that equal to 0, so that means that my x-intercept is at negative 6. And we've found all of our important points and asymptotes. Let's go ahead and graph this. So I take all of this information and put it on my grid. I'm going to wait until the end to do something about that hole. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. y-intercept at 0, negative 2, and an x-intercept at negative 6, and you know what these rational functions look like by now. You know that they're going to kind of hug the asymptotes, and so you see that it's going to hug here and then go along here. What you need to remember now is that there's a hole at x equals negative 4. Okay, so when we graph this, you want to make sure to put an open circle at that negative 4 to indicate that there's a hole in your graph there. And then finally, we need maybe an additional point or two to see whether we're up here or down here for the other half of our um, rational function. So I'm going to plug in 4 for x. And when I do, I get 10 over 1. So that's just 10. So 4 comma 10 is way up here. 
And that probably tells me all I need to know about how my graph is going to look. It's going to be hugging here to here. Finally, the last thing it's asking us is to state the domain again. So hopefully by now you've kind of gotten the knack of domain for rational functions at least. You should know by now they're starting at negative infinity and they go to your asymptote and pick up after the asymptote and go to positive infinity. And if you've got multiple asymptotes, then you've got multiple unions. Start off the next example the same way. Start by factoring. So x minus 3 times x plus 1 over x minus 5 times x plus 1. And these guys cancel out. So I know there will be a whole at x equals negative 1. My vertical asymptote is what I get when x minus 5 equals 0. So I have an, a vertical asymptote at x equals 5, a horizontal asymptote at 1 over 1, which is 1, so that's y equals 1. My y-intercept, again, that's what y equals when x equals 0. And when I plug in 0 here and 0 here, I end up with positive 3 fifths. For my x-intercept, I set what's left in my numerator equal to 0. So that's 3 comma 0 for my x-intercept. And let's take what we have and plot it on our graph and see where things fall. Vertical asymptote, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. Horizontal asymptote here. Y-intercept at 3 fifths, so just under that line x-intercept at 3 comma 0. And those two points give us enough information about this part of the graph. But maybe let's plug in 6 for x to see what's happening after this asymptote. So when I plug in 6, I've got 3 over 1, which is just 3. So 6, 1, 2, 3, and that should be enough to give us the shape of our graph. Once again, we're asked for the domain. Starts at negative infinity, goes to my asymptote of 5, picks right back up at 5, and goes to positive infinity. Now let's look at solving rational equations. And again, I apologize for going out of order, but I've got to save my trees whenever I can. Okay, so in this example, we're starting off with some relatively simple rational equations. You'll notice that there's only one fraction in the equation. And back here, we're told that it's Solving a rational equation is made a lot easier when we multiply the equation by the least common denominator. So in these two examples, I only have one denominator. So you multiply the whole equation by it. Okay, so when I multiply everything here by x plus 3 over 1, realize that this x plus 3 and this x plus 3 will cancel out for the 20 term, so it's just 20 minus 4 times x plus 3. And of course, 0 times anything is just 0. Well, now this is an easy equation to solve. I distribute the 4. 
combine my like terms, and move towards getting the x by itself. So x equals 2. Take a moment and work through the your turn below. Part, the last kind of example that we're dealing with in this lesson is solving a rational equation where there could potentially be extraneous solutions. And the first thing you have to realize is you're doing the same thing that we did in the last example. You have to find the least common denominator, which is a little bit more challenging here because I have more denominators. You want to find that least common denominator and multiply the whole equation by that least common denominator. So this is as factored as I can get it. This is as factored as I can get it. This factors to x minus 6 times x plus 3, which is pretty darn convenient because that's this times this. So what we're going to do in the next step is to multiply the entire equation by x minus 6 times x plus 3. Now on the right-hand side, that's just going to cancel out and leave me with the 27 on the right-hand side. Where it gets sticky is on the left-hand side. This x plus 3 will cancel out with this x plus 3, but the 2x in my numerator would have to multiply by x minus 6 plus 3 times this denominator would cancel out with this in the numerator, but I'd have to multiply by the x plus 3 kind of left over, and that's going to equal 27. Well, now this is an equation not like wildly easy, but at least it's not fractional. So let's distribute. I have 2x squared minus 12x plus 3x plus 9 equals 27. So because it's a quadratic, let's bring everything over to the left-hand side and get it in standard form. So we have 2x squared minus 9x. I combine my like terms. And when I subtract 27 from both sides, I have negative 18. So I want to factor this trinomial. 2 is a prime number, so I know I've got 2x and x. I'm looking for factors of 36, whose difference is 9, and that's 12 and 3. So I know 2 times a number has to equal 12 or 3. My money's on 12, so I'm going to put a 6 here so that 6 times 2 gives me that 12. I know that 6 times this number has to equal 18, so that's 3. And then finally, I want to make sure that I end up with negative 9x, not positive, so I make the 12x negative, make that positive. And then I set up my two equations, or my two expressions, equal to 0. So 2x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 6 equals 0. So that would mean that x is negative 3 halves or 6. But you always want to go back and look at the original equation. So right away, I would hope that you'd notice 6 is a problem. Because if I plug in 6 for x, I'd be dividing by 0. So x equals negative 3 halves. In the next example, once again, you want to look at your denominators and make sure they're as factored as possible so that you can identify your least common denominator. This is as factored as I can get it. This is as factored as I can get it. This has a common denominator, has a common factor of x. And when I factor that x out, I've got x plus 6 left over. So once again, that's pretty convenient because that's these two things multiplied together. So at this point, we're going to take this whole equation and multiply it by x times x plus 6. <clears throat> it's just going to cancel out the denominator on the left. So I'll have negative 12 equal to 
in this fraction, the x plus 6's will cancel out, but I'd have to multiply the x times 2, so I have 2x. And then plus, when I multiply this term by that least common denominator, this time it's my x's that cancel out, and I have to take that x minus 2 and multiply it by x plus 6. So that means I need to FOIL. So I have negative 12 equal to 2x plus x squared plus 4x because I get 6x minus 2x combining to give me 4x minus 12. Once again, it's a quadratic, so I want everything on one side of the equation. I'm going to bring everything over to the right so that my x squared term stays positive. So I have 0 equal to x squared plus 6x equals 0. Oh, I don't need another x equals 0. And the negative 12s would cancel out. At this point, I can factor the x out, and I've got x plus 6. So that means x equals 0 or x equals negative 6. Oh, my. Well, that, um, that doesn't work, because if x equals 0, then I'm dividing by 0. And if x equals negative 6, well, that doesn't work either. So there are no solutions.